Hello. How are you guys and gals? <laughs> oh, good. Twitch looks like, oh, Twitch doesn't look like it might be okay. I better figure that out. I don't know what's going on there. How are you guys? Um, picked out buttons today for my reversible archer. Hi, Samia. Hi, Melon. How's it going? So it was hard. It was really hard because I realized as I was picking them out, I had to pick a button that was the same size on either side, right? Because I have buttons on the inside and the outside of the garment, <clears throat> but I'm using the same buttonhole. Hi, Nana. How's it going? Morning. <laughs> so I, I had to pick a button that was the same size for the hole and I figured I'd probably have to pick the same number of holes. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> How's it going, Megan? Hi, Lisa. Welcome, welcome. So this is what I ended up with. We're making the saffron jeans, but awesome. So I'm gonna do this one. It's this little grayish blue, but it has the kind of rounded back um, for this side. And I think I'm going to do these pearlescent ones. Isn't there, there's an easy way to open these. What is, oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to do the, this one for this side. So, a little pearlescent. Wish me luck. I'm doing it today because I really want this and I really want to... Um, do a home so catwalk with it because it fits so good so i'm pretty happy all right so i might place my uh buttonholes at the end of the stream seeing how we're doing so let's put these aside no 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 don't put them there don't put them there i'll look for them forever if i put them there <laughs> cool so we are making the um deer and doe saffron pants and Hearts Fabric gave us the project. So they gave us this great fabric. They gave us a jeans making kit for the zipper fly and all the hardware uh, rivets too. Um, and this is from Closet Case Pattern, so they stock them there. And let's see, I wanted to tell you about the fabric. So they use a lot of dead stock or mill end denims. Um, well, I actually don't know if they use a lot of them. This particular denim is a dead stock denim, which means that they bought the rest from someone and um, they can't get it again. So if you're interested in this, um, you should you should pick it up. I really like the dead stock denims typically because they're usually fabrics that have been used in garment production. Like in, you know, they weren't made for the, I don't know how to phrase this. Actually, I'm not an expert on that, but I tend to like those fabrics because they're usually ones that were um, mass produced in a way that they're just like tried and true. Hi, Terry. I don't really know how to phrase that. They're not cheap. <laughs> That's how I'm gonna phrase that. They're usually not cheap. This is a pretty lightweight, very stretchy denim. And it is item number 98827 stretch denim indigo cotton spandex 56 inches wide and then the lining is dotty friends in black i think this is a cotton and steel oh no it's ruby star society my bad by melody miller and um this one is 99406 it's quilting cotton super cute it's got the little like gold this is kind of shiny. The little gold bits right here are, are kind of shiny. So it's pretty cute. I really like it. <laughs> and then the hardware kit also has a item number and it's 95032. So let's, let's see what we got here. I've used a lot of the closet case um, jean making kits. Mostly where I get it from. So you get your brass zipper navy blue and then they also so this was the um this is the brass and they also have nickel that's what they wrote down so you get the buttons and the rivets to match which is kind of nice 
So, good evening, Louise. Hi, Laura. Uh, yes, this is a stretch denim pattern. You know, I don't have the pattern card. I might start asking them really nicely if they wouldn't mind needles. Oh, they sent me some needles. That's nice. <laughs> all right, so let's put this all in here. Oh, this is closet case. They 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 give you some heavy duty needles, which is great. These don't work in my um, industrial machine, but I, they do work in my home machine. And it's because I can tell they have the flat shank on the back right here. I don't know if you can really see that. But um, the shank for the industrial is round. So I just hold on to these. I sometimes gift these to new sewists who are kind of cash strapped um, because they, they just don't want to invest in a packet of everything right they're trying to figure it out and so sometimes I feel like um, I can kind of share that but though but I can use these in my home machine so they work great oh that's awesome Laura yeah so I think I might ask them nicely if they'll send me the pattern envelope because it kind of get has that kind of like marketing info for the jeans and it would tell me if these are high rise or low rise which are all of you guys have told me these are pretty high rise right they look high rise in the pictures they're really cute I think I'm gonna trace off the size for my daughter and make them for her. This is so perfect for her. So the only options in this pattern is, so here's version A, with back pockets. The only comment I saw very, very consistently through all the Instagram posts is that the pocket is very small. And then the other option is no uh, carriers of belt loops or back pockets. So let's see, what do they want us to do? They don't really say. We're definitely gonna do pockets and belt loops though. So. All right, when you have high rise pants like this that go all the way up to your waist, um, a belt is rarely necessary, which is kind of nice, you know, because once you get over the the blurple of the belly and the hips, you and you're tapered up here, you have your hips to keep your pants on. So, <laughs> Laura, <laughs> are you making the ginger jeans for her or you? <laughs> this is definitely like I feel like all patterns are for all ages. But this is definitely the kind of um, jeans my daughter wears, like when you see them in the pictures. And they and she's just, she's a very slender person too, so having something up high is really helpful for her because things kind of fall off if they're too low on her. I felt like my shawl just got snagged on something, but it's because my my necklace has a big chunky closure. I think my shawl's okay. I was like, ah, you know. I felt it catch somewhere. Oh yeah, look at that. Maybe it's this? Maybe here? Yikes. I need to block that again. All right, I'm in the path of the heater. It's kind of warm. Yeah, you first, Laura. <laughs> okay, so um, I, they also sent me the fusible um, Wait, what is this? This is what I've used with them. No, no, no. This is like a, um, this is a fusible, stretchy interfacing. It's not like the other stuff I've used, so. All right, so let's see here. Let's move these off there. I'll try and remember to put the fabric information in the Instagram post um, that I posted, or at least one of them, so that you can kind of find the item number in print, which would be easier to look up. So, and these are the instructions, which I don't really need right now. All right, let's look at it. <laughs> I'm like totally just green, aren't I? They trace off a, a size they want. It's usually my size. They're really nice about that. Um, 
and they put it on the Swedish tracing paper, which I'm kind of getting into. I like how clingy it is to the fabric, and they sell this too. They sent me some. Because they were like, what? You've never used this? And I was like, I haven't. All right, so let's cut apart our pattern pieces here. Can you see them okay? Do you want me to darken it up? So this looks like the front. I kind of like this pocket detail. It's got a welt, but it also has the um, uh, that angle. I think that's cool. Oh, smart, Laura. Yeah, once the waistband goes on, there's less motivation to make changes later. <laughs> well, they have you individually cut out the belt loops. I'll probably do that in one big strip. Let's see here. We have, oh, there's a waist. Oh, it's curved in pieces. Cool. See? Back is on the fold. There's a side seam with the waistband. You don't usually see that except on um, the trousers, right? You don't usually see that at all. That means there's a lot of curve happening there. Pocket top. So this must be the facing. Um, what is this? Oh, this is the welt. Okay, that's the fly. I like to group my pieces by fabric. And so far these are all in the denim. I'm looking for my pocket bag right now, which is right here. This is denim, back pocket. I'll get rid of some of this. I feel like cutting the pocket lining out is like the um, dessert at the end. <laughs> Hi, Stephanie, how's it going? <laughs> All right, so let's see here. This is the front. I'm going to take a gander at the instructions. I know what I would do for the interfacing. I would put this on the fly, the waistband, and maybe the um, the fly extension right here. You know, I don't know if you can even see that. But I wanna make sure I don't do something drastically different from the instructions, just in case someone wants to use this as like a tutorial. I don't think I'm gonna make any fit mods um, because they requested size 46, which I think that they're just nice and thinking. Hello? Hi, I'm streaming. No, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> they want to know if I want tacos or burritos. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay, so um, let's see here. Fabric. Okay, so we have everything but those pocket bags there. Oh, they don't show the interfacing. Where's the interfacing? It calls for it. Let's see. Okay, so That's so weird. There's I don't see instructions on where to cut the interfacing and what pattern pieces. Um, it's probably written on the pattern pieces. So, oh, nice, Stephanie. <laughs> In a black black. You have room service, Glenn. Nice. <laughs> you wish you got room service. <laughs> That's the first time they've ever done that. It was really nice. I, if I weren't streaming, I'd probably say yes, just so that, you know, like when you say no, then people don't ask you again. Like it's a good idea to say yes, or at least say, just because I say no now, it doesn't mean you can't ask me again. But I brought, I know this is gonna sound really terrible, but I brought a peanut butter and jelly sandwich today and it sounds so good. <laughs> Sometimes that just sounds so good to me. I love eating it with chips inside, <laughs> so. All right, so I am going to assume that the um, pattern pieces
Let's go. Our which are right here. So let's just browse these. That doesn't say. Cut. Okay, so the um, waistband for sure. I'm looking for that. Uh, there's no. Is there a pattern piece for the fly shield? See, this one says. There, there. It's only one layer of paper. I do not see it. So do they not make you a pattern piece for the little curved fly thingy? But you need to cut interfacing out for it. That's really weird. Um, where is that? Yeah, see, there's no... Okay, well, that's weird. Oh, Stephanie, you know, um, I actually didn't browse Hart's site, but it's worth checking out. Um, and you know what? They are super responsive with email. And I know that before I was working with them because I used to contact them before. So they didn't know me when I started streaming. I had to introduce myself, but it was in a way that's kind of cool. It was kind of organic that way because they didn't connect that I had been ordering them fr from them for, for years. And I was also ordering them as a business and I would ask them, hey, you know, like I, I would have like a big old fail with fabric. So I'd get 100 yards of each of my fabrics in for the season and one of the fabrics wouldn't go with the group. Like say I would have to pick out an outer fabric, a lining fabric and a binding fabric. And typically one of those occasionally it would be one of the three wouldn't match once they came in and it looked like they matched on the card even even i would buy from the same group from the vendor but i would then emergency because you can't just say yo i need to return this they won't take it first of all your vendor won't take it <laughs> unless they made a mistake they will not take it so now i have to find a place for 100 yards which was always hard but the other thing was um, I had to emergency find 100 yards to replace for my binding. And so what I would do was immediately call my rep and say, all right, this doesn't work. Do you have these three styles in stock? Can I get them on a roll or on bolts right away? And he'd say yes. And then I would contact Hearts because they bought from a lot of the same vendors. And I would say um, I would buy a fat quarter or something of each of the fabrics and I would ask them in the thing, hey, do these go with, and I would list the other two fabrics I was trying to match. And they would tell me, they would say yes or no or whatever. And then I would get the fat quarter and do some samples, make sure, and then I would order the 100 yards. So they were super responsive because I would have to do it right away. Because I had to get the fabric in and then send it to a vendor to be cut into binding. So my experience is if you ask them like look i'm looking for a really black black and one that's not going to fade and if there's a lot of um synthetic in the denim because of the stretch it's going to hold its color a little better probably the more cotton the more it's going to fade so but um if they don't have something you might look at ordering um from needle sharp the subscription box folks because my ash jeans came from them and that black denim is black and it's staying black. You can even ask her, hey, uh, you had a black denim in, um, and it's stretch um, in one of your boxes. And you can even mention me because she might remember that and then you can probably track it down. The only other people I know is Blackbird but they're in Canada, so it takes a little bit, a little bit longer. They're really fast, um, but it costs a little more. So, anyway, oh, nice, Terry. What do you use silk for? All right, so it looks like I need to use these in the interfacing. All these are in denim, and then I need to put some interfacing there. Worth no pattern piece. That's so weird. Oh, linings, yeah. Silk lining is 
That's the best. Alrighty. So let's start with our big pieces so that we make sure we get our pattern correct on there. We, I'm saving the lining to last because I like it like dessert. I know that's kind of weird, but it's a palette cleanser. All right, let's move my weights here. Uh, I did press this lightly, but it didn't really need it. Oof, that's dark, you guys. Look how wide this is. 56 inches wide. It's the width of my, it's just about the width of my table here. I am going to, I'm going to change my arch over my table so that I don't have that little thing there. <laughs> I know you can't see it, but I can. Yeah, you're welcome, Stephanie. Good luck. Alrighty. So there's no nap on this fabric. Um, so I actually could do this. If this was my daughter's size, I'd actually be able to get it. Oh, I can actually get this in very little fabric. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> so wide <laughs> but let's check the grain line because that might change i may be wrong <laughs> so <laughs> let's see here here's my grain line i did fold the fabric so that it would be um, on grain on both sides oh gosh that's perfect eight eight When I would do like really big pattern drafting jobs that were a little bit confusing and I was getting down to that, all right, all the measurements have to work. Um, and you'd be doing a ton of measurements between different sizes. I would say the measurement out loud. This really helped me. And it took me a while to figure this out. But what I figured out is when I heard the number out loud, I was more likely to remember what it was. Because sometimes, oh, there's a little bug. Go away. Um, sometimes I'd be like, wait, what did I just measure? <laughs> you know? Okay, so here we go. It's got a pretty wide, um, selvage, like, um, you can, might be able to see this little white part, but the selvage actually comes in about an inch. So right up to where my fingernail is here, that is the selvage. All right, so 12 and a quarter. You can see the selvage is, I mean, you probably can't see. Oh, I, I only have to hear. Okay, wait. Um, just a second, let me get this right. Once I cut a piece off, I can show you what I'm about to tell you. 12 and a quarter. Oh, I just went the wrong way, didn't I? I need, oh, here we go. All right. So um, the selvage is um, the part that's, you know, kind of finishes the edge of the fabric. Not kind of, but it finishes. Um, and I can see that it's pulling up the fabric a little bit. That's not bad. It's actually not that surprising because this is a stretch denim. So you would want to stay away from that and make sure that you don't cut into the selvage, you know, like I would cut it off or something. I'm not going to, my point right here ends at that selvage, so I'm okay. So I'm tempted to make this a little bigger to fit me. Um, so I think that's what they'd want. I can still do that. I have a lot of room right here. My line is right here, just so as you know. <laughs> right, Malin, exactly. Yeah, it just helps, like, saying it out loud. I forget that trick, and then sometimes I'll just do it without thinking, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why you do that, you know? I'm going to put this little weight here. So I'm one size below the thing, the pattern, and 
Now, I could have taken the time to trace off the other sides that they provided, but because usually that would be my size, and now I'm just getting a little softer, all the pro other proportions are probably spot on. So I kind of just want to grade out to that upper size. So let's just look at the difference between the sizes. So I am, right now in front of me, I'm cutting out this 46. Now, the bust is not important. Um, my waist is more like the 48. My hip is more like the 46. So really it's just my waist, but this is a pretty high waisted garment. So what I'm thinking is maybe I just let the hit the waist i'll just add to the waist and the waistband that would be the easiest thing to do even adding yeah because it's like a one and five eighths difference so even adding a half inch to the side seam at the waist gives me two inches in circumference it goes up really quick so um i can just do that you know i think i will i'll just draw it on here so I don't forget. I kind of just now decided to do this. So we'll just kind of do half inch. And I'm gonna kind of taper it down to the hip. I don't really need to add to the hip. And if you do the exact same thing to both, my only thing is that I have to do this with the pocket too. I'm gonna move this one over. You don't really need to um, change much else. You just need to ch make sure your waistband gets the same treatment. Eight and three quarters. cutting it close there and every time I move it nothing happens <laughs> so okay here we go so my side seam I don't know if I'm gonna show you this is what this looks like see if I can show you um, You see that a little better? That's the pocket, and the waistband, or the waist seam, the hip, just like this. There we go. So what I need here, I'll have to do it to the waistband. These three pieces here. So the Swedish tracing paper is actually making this really easy because they, they, I left like a little bit of space around the, just serendipitously. So let's just lay all these pattern pieces on top of each other like this. This is gonna be the easiest way to do it. I'm gonna pin them together. You could even sew them together with this fabric, this, this Swedish tracing paper. And now let's lay this behind. And I'm gonna line up this um, with the pattern piece that looks like that. All right, I'm gonna layer these so it's a little easier to see actually. The reason I'm putting all of them on here is that they all need this adjustment if I change the front so i might as well just do them all at one time because this is the this fabric the swedish tracing paper makes it really easy to do it you know that way i also know <laughs> i've changed it all right so now i'm going to line up that seam right there
I'm going to pin it in place just to itself like that. All right, and so now I add my half inch. I can see the side seam there. Here, I'll draw it on here. Here's the side seam of the pocket underneath like that. So now I add this half inch right here and then I'm going to kind of taper it. So this is really nice, these lines here. Uh, typically this line right here would mean that's the hip line. Can you see that? There's a line going across. If that's the case, that's brilliant. But it could be a length and a shortened line, like this one looks like a double. I don't know. I'm not going to trust it. I'm actually going to measure down on the side seam. Like this notch. Let's go by this notch. If I make sure my taper happens by that notch, I'm adding the same on either one. And I'll probably use my rotary knife to true this up because I'm looking at it upside down and sideways, you know? So. And then I just need to do it to the waistband here. And I'm just going to add up add a straight half inch. This is definitely the quick and dirty way. Left, right, front. Okay, this is the front. Because the waistband sits above the waist seam up here, right? It sits above that waist seam. It's not a it's not a facing. If it were a facing, I would want to lay it lined up with the waist seam there, and then make sure I have the same um, taper happening that I even going towards the hip here. But this is a waistband, so it sits up above the waist up here. Doesn't look like it matches because I have a left line and a right line. So there's two to cut there. So. so this is definitely a quick and dirty way. All I'm doing is adding to the waist circumference a wee bit. Well, not really a wee bit, but <laughs> we'll just call it that. All right, I'm gonna leave those there. They're out of the way. And then when I cut those, um, cut this side seam right here, I'll remove them and then I'll cut inside here to get the um, true pocket opening there for the front. All right, let's make sure everything else looks good. Let's go. I, I can't, I don't know if this is my new blade. I think it is. It looks like it has the blue on it from the thing we just cut out. All right, let's do it. Oh yeah, that's a new blade, all right. Woo, that's easy. All right, red line, red line. So if you're trying to fit jeans and you're just simply focusing on the measurement, it's nice um, trusting the finished measurements or the pattern envelopes measurements. This isn't to say that I'm compensating for any fit issues that I typically have. Um, you know, or fit issues, maybe because this pattern tends to fit a certain way in a certain area, you know. Um, and then there's the fit issues that certain pattern companies have, just kind of collect, like most of their patterns have that same fit issue because that's how they designed it. And it's not like it's wrong or right. It's just like maybe that's what they saw the need for, right? So, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to remove this. And I'll just leave these all together like that. So really, all I added to this front piece was this little tiny bit right here. These interior corners are always a little tricky. Okay, so I'm going to pin my front here to the um, pattern because 
I actually would really like this to stay accurate because this little, there's a little dot right here that's really important with zipper, zipper sewing. And then there's two notches here. I usually only see one here. So maybe the other one's first, something else. But I'll show you, wait, okay, here's another interior corner. So this little dot right here, that's really important, and um, I don't want to give you guys a heart attack, but really, I, right now, I would just clip right to it, because <laughs> I know that's what's going to happen later, but I'm not going to, and that's because I'm going to study the way Deer and Doe has their fly instructions. That way, um, I can be familiar with how they sew it, and I'm going to compare it to the, the way I know best, so... Yeah, H dot, it's working today. I'm so glad. Sorry, I just saw your 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 little note there. I don't know if you're still here, but I'm really glad that yeah, Twitch kind of figured it out today. You know, it was kind of a bummer. I didn't, I really didn't know how to fix that, especially when it was fine on YouTube. You know. All right, so here's our front. Yay. Oh, but I need interfacing for this little extension, the fly extension right here. So I think what I'm going to do is, um, I guess I'm going to lay it like this. I'm going to lay the pattern piece on here and try and get it on there. I have a feeling it goes to the, oh, see this dot would normally line up with one of those. Oops. So maybe it lines up with this one here. All right. Do I need two of these? I'm going to cut two just in case. Why not? There must be a pattern piece for this. I must have just not seen it. All right, so I don't want these to get unlined up because they are squirrely. So I'm gonna go to that notch there. See, it's kind of, this is kind of weird that I would have to do this myself. Where'd the notch go? I was gonna pin this puppy right to it. So I wanna lose it. You know? Okay. Alright, let's cut the back out. I'm gonna get this. I really want to slide this to me, which is always risky. Yeah, that worked pretty good. There we go. This way I can look at this um, side seam right here. Pretty sure the seam allowances are five eighths, judging by where those notches on the fly extension and where the dot is. So this is, uh, maybe you can see it now. I don't know if you can see, probably not. that the selvage definitely pulls it, it kind of scrunches it a little bit together. It, and it's probably because they have this like stabilizing, it's really dark. You can see this line right here. 
So yeah, that kind of offers a little bit of stabilization here, but it does, it's t it's kind of drawing it in a little bit along this edge. And, and a lot of purists, I don't know who those people are, but <laughs> label people purists, um, will say never to cut, including your selvage, especially using your selvage. Like say you're really skinned on fabric and I have been there and I've done this thing. I'm going to tell you that's probably not a good idea to do. But the selvage really binds that edge of fabric. It doesn't let it like relax a little bit. And so it can kind of distort your pattern piece. So it's just good to be aware of it. Like you, you don't normally see one, like cause if you had to do that, it'd be like one piece would have the selvage <laughs> included and the other piece wouldn't. And so they might act differently. So just something to think about. All right, so um, I just need to mark my pockets here. I don't really think I need these notches, but we'll, we'll add them. I always say that and then I'm like, oh, I kind of do need that. I am gonna put it on this inseam. So classically, your inseam right here, this is what I've learned with jeans, um, you're gonna ease between the notches through the rise right here, through the inseam, sorry, you know? And that means that the front and the back aren't the same measurement and it just makes it work better. And I'm sorry, I've kind of lost the logic behind that. Like I kind of forgot I could look it up for you. But, um, <laughs> Louise, yeah, see, that's me telling you off nicely. Like I do it, but I'm just warning you that that can happen. Like you definitely wouldn't want to do it on a fancy fabric, um, on a dress or something. Cause it may look funny or act funny. Um, Quilters would probably complain about it too. But quilters do it. Especially because their pieces are usually squares and stuff, and so they can utilize a straight edge, you know, but they will say, yeah, I had to use a selvage, you know. And it looks different, so. So anyway, um, I always forget to put this notch here, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I need to like, usually you ease between the knees on the on the crotch end of the inseam, so. All right, so let's mark my pocket, back pockets here. So this was the one thing people say is that the pocket is small. Right now it doesn't look small, but if this is the pocket pattern piece, um, then yeah, it would get kind of small. Usually they wouldn't trace that on here though. They would trace the, yeah, so it's the finished pocket. I don't know if you guys can see that. But if you look at the hashtag, and by the way, the hashtag for the saffron, I looked it up, is DD Saffron, S-A-F-R-A-N. Um, it is not saffron jeans, but there are some in the saffron jeans hashtag as well. S-A-F-R-A-N, by the way, not with the O-N. And the um, you will see very commonly people will say, like they, you see a lot of comparison shots between different jeans they've there's a lot of bum picks, <laughs> pockets and stuff. Um, and they did look a little small, which it doesn't look small here. I don't know. You know, the smaller it is, the more fabric you have to stretch. That's one way of looking at it. You also notice there's no yoke in this pair of jeans, which I think is suspicious. <laughs> I'm so suspicious. But it looks fantastic in the pictures. There was a few that I was like, oh, I don't know about the, the crotch and the rise there. Um, so that was the only consistent thing I saw. So we'll see if I can wear these and I'm <laughs> a little nervous. <laughs> awesome age dot. All right. Mark my pockets here. Why do I use these? Every time I use these, I tell you guys, why do I use the quilting pins? When I'm doing stuff like this, the quilting pins, they just work them themselves out. And I don't think I really realized that was happening until I started noticing um, that it was, cause I, I just like, why does that always happen, you know? And then I kind of realized, you know, that never used to happen. Maybe it's because I was a cheapskate and bought the big box of quilting pins. And they're not cheap to buy. It's just that um, I just hated the, the other pins are kind of light duty. And they 
get bent a little bit easier. They don't last as long. Oh, you can still see I'm in the I'm in the salvage there a little bit, so I am kind of doing a no no, but it'll get cut off. But when um, the diameter of the pin for those little like glass head ones is smaller and it stays in the fabric better. I don't really need to keep the pattern piece with it, but I will. We know it's it's two pattern pieces, your front and your back, you know. All right, we have the rest of our pattern pieces here. Okay, so for these guys here, I need to make sure I don't cut this edge off. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna make myself a little note here. You know? Which means I just put red arrows pointing to that edge. And then that way I know, I try and keep them near the ed ends where I would start to, to see that little swing out. Oh, actually I want this one. I'm gonna cut that off because that's the shape. All right. These are in the fabric and then these are in the denim. I only usually need one of these. Oh no, this is the welt. I need two of the welt. It's a uh, cut on the cross grain. I can barely see it myself. Um, I usually only need one of these, but it doesn't say. Okay. I can see my fabric shifted too. Let's get this back on. Green for both layers. All right. Have our pocket facing. The well, you could do, like I saw someone, um, so the edge of the pocket opening has a, a welt, which is just like a band of fabric that kind of adorns the, as you put your hand in. I saw some interesting applications, like some people did um, like a fake leather right there, or you could do a completely different fabric there. You could do a contrast. You could do the back side of the denim. You could have some fun with it, you know? We could decide that when we're over there, you know, we could do the back side of the denim. But it is kind of a nice, unique detail. And I keep putting it off the grain and I keep not being able to see it. It's so faint. <laughs> All right, let's make sure it's on grain. I'm gonna get it away from that selvage weirdness. And then let's put this one. On grain. Cutting out jeans doesn't take too long, only if you're not making a ton of fit changes. this out of I think I only need one of these it's the shield the fly shield <gasps> I did it I, I cut off what I added dang it good thing we don't we have fabric <laughs> I was Literally thinking in that moment, so
someone's probably telling me, don't forget not to cut that off. And I, as I was cutting that off, oh my gosh. All right, let's cut these pieces out. Wow. Cutting on the cross screen feels so different. That's so funny I did that. Isn't that funny? Oh my gosh. If you want to make your pocket bigger, um, if you want to make it longer, just, I, you know, what I would do honestly is, let me cut this out and I'll show you the pattern piece up close. It feels like it would be really easy to figure out how to, to do that, but I think it would be really easy also to do it asymmetrically. So you have these um, hem lines at the top. So if you want to just lengthen your pocket, make a parallel line, you know, like about right here, and then just cut it and then add the amount you want it to be lengthened and then just kind of blend in the sides, right? If you wanted to just get wider, you could do the exact same thing down the middle and then just spread it apart um, and then refashion your point here. You could also just add, you know, a half inch all the way around or whatever it is and it would get bigger all the way around. You could just add it to the sides um, and then just make sure you taper from your point out and I would fold it on in half and then cut it so that you have a symmetrical pocket still, you know? So there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, and if any of you have ever sewn the ginger jeans, you'll see that their pocket is asymmetrical and same with, um, who's the other one that we saw? And so there's a little bit of a curve right here, kind of mimicking the hip. It's very subtle. Um, you don't notice it really unless you're looking for it and it is kind of a nice detail. So you could do all think kinds of things. Uh, I both pull in. I mean, you're definitely, um, <laughs> Louise, um, the Megan Nielsen Ash jeans, is that which one it was? I was going to say that, but I was like, really? I've only made three pairs of jeans, three jeans patterns. Um, yeah. So Malin, I mean, the thing with these jeans is they aren't mine. I don't get to keep these. So in a way it's the easiest way to sew jeans, right? I am definitely able to just sew, cut and sew them up and send them off, right? And we've talked a lot about fitting um, pants and jeans in the Mountain View pull on jeans. We talked a lot about sizing. We really got into it because I think a lot of you guys didn't hadn't heard someone talk about like how the garment industry looks at size charts, how ready to wear, like if you're buying ready to wear, how to look at a size chart, um, and then how to look at it at home. So we talked a lot about that, like picking your size and adjusting it. We did the same thing when we've sewn gingers. We've done the same thing with the ash jeans. Like we've talked a lot about fitting jeans when they were for me. Um, I don't typically focus on do I have drag lines across the back thigh what I do is how do they feel and how do they look like literally how do they feel when they're on like my jeans right now feel awesome and these are gingers and these were probably um they have the cat pocket lining so I think this was the last pair I sewed I think it's the last pair I sewed so in a way they fit the the best but I like the waist being higher of the first pair and those fit me the worst and now they fit me really good because I've gained weight, okay? So they fit better. But I also removed the waistband on those and brought it in a little bit once and we did that last summer when I kind of was like, I need to fix these jeans, you know? <clears throat> my big fail on almost every pair of pants I make except for two of my five is where I put the gosh darn button. <laughs> like, let's see, on these. So, see, yeah, so the pair I was wearing yesterday, um, those fit me really good. I really love those. But the button is a tiny bit low. 
And so it makes the top of the waistband wing out because it's getting like I'm sitting down so it pushes it out and then it stays pushed out when I'm wearing him like standing up and then you'll see it pushing against my shirt it makes my shirt poke out right there um, and it's and it's pretty it's pretty drastic so I'd have to either patch that hole or remove and replace the waistband on those if I really wanted to change the button I'm getting a lot better at where I place the button I actually looked at just different pairs of jeans, you know? <laughs> I don't have any any ready to wear anymore. So I looked at them before I got rid of my last pair. So that's one of my fails when I do it. But um, yeah, Malin, I would, I think if you already have a couple pairs of jeans, even if they're not perfect, I feel like that is still extremely valuable information. You're like, well, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Starting with what you don't know is, really the pl first place we all start right and then once you have like what you don't like what you what if you start with the things you don't like about something that I feel like that is more than just a beginner way to do it I start that way on everything it's like the way I approach every project is why well, no I don't want it to be like this 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 or do these things I don't want it to be like these and then once you get it kind of get all the things out of there now you're like all right these are kind of what I want. Now what do I want out of these? And then you kind of go forward from there. So the, it's really rare jeans or pants or any pattern just fits straight up right out of the box, right? We all have our own little issues. The ash jeans were the closest. And the only reason I'm not really like worried about the fit on these is that they're not mine. And it's kind of a fun experience in a way to just be like all right I'm gonna just cut these straight out the package using the size that I would normally wear and see what happens you know and then if I ever make these for me I'll know all right I'm gonna put my weight over that to remind my dummy <laughs> my dummy head about that oh did I just get a nick in my blade when did I get a nick in my blade I was careless somewhere. Yeah, I have a nick in my blade. Dang it. Brand new. Brand new. And how'd that go, Malin? And is that because you liked the mountain view? Or you didn't like the mountain view on you? Where's the nick? Where is it? <laughs> I could even make the pocket facing, you know, the back of the denim. I mean, you could do all kinds of things. I think that there's, um, when you start home sewing, you start going, oh, I can do all these things. And then you're like, yeah, and then it starts looking home sewn. <laughs> you know, so. All right, I need my waistbands. Here they are. Okay, this one's on the fold, and this one is not. So let's, let's look at this over here. I don't really like cutting things on the fold. I need two of these though, for sure. So let's do this. how this blade is it's not great <laughs> this is kind of in the middle of the fabric but I'm gonna use it I have the scraps I have aren't really gonna be useful for much so I might as well just use them up I 
It is still there. I thought it was gone. You know? Ah, oh, that's cool. So now do you just transfer that onto every pair of pants you make? Or is that your plan? Because I think that's great. And so when I do a muslin or make a prototype, I'll often um, just make shorts and I will um, fill in the pockets, you know, like kind of like what I just did where I, where I pinned all the pattern pieces underneath that front pant and I fill it in and then I just cut it out like that as a solid piece. I don't cut the back pockets. I don't cut the zipper fly things. I n most likely don't even do the waistband. I just do the front and back pants and I sew them together and then I try them on and then that's, and then I just throw that away. As wasteful as that sounds. It's better than wasting um, two and a half yards on more fabric for a whole nother pair of pants because those didn't fit, you know. Or I will try and make them into wearable shorts. And I did that with one and they are shorts I wear occasionally. So. Oh, I need to make interfacing in those. And this one. So I need two lefts and two rights. These aren't on the fold. Um, the left goes to this first line, the right goes to this first line. I'm not sure you can see that. I'm kind of looking at this line parallel to the edge, but I'm also looking at the lines on the denim because I can kind of see it. This denim has actually a really nice look. I really like it. It's very stretchy though. I think this would actually be good for Mountain View pull-ons, by the way. Granted, you know, it's much easier to find denim in the right stretch amount for those Mountain View pawns. When I first saw that you need 20%, I was like, hmm, can I find that? Uh, because I don't ever remember it being that high. I feel like denim originally when it became stretch was like 10%. It was just a hint of stretch, and now they've kind of gone the other direction. So... All right, so I'm going to take off the top two, fold it right there on that left line, still preserving the pattern piece, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. So now we have our waistbands, and we just need interfacing for those. And we need our fly shields, so. I'm gonna make this line parallel, but I'm kind of gonna get it a little further away. I can see it pulling in there. I don't feel it catching now, so I wish I could find out where it's at. There it is. Oh, really? I bet, Glenn. I actually remember my husband shopping for jeans and him coming upon that, and he was like, what the heck? <laughs> and it's funny because, um, you know, the style of jean he likes to wear, there's just no way it needs stretch you know but I could see if a guy was wearing tighter jeans or more like really fitted or higher up on the waist but you know men's waists classically don't taper very much so um they don't really benefit from that stretch seems like I don't know maybe they would maybe I'm completely wrong about that all right so I'm gonna put the these are gonna be stretchy so I need, is this going to be big enough across? It is, right? Kinda. 
I just need one. Um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut my back. I'm going to cut my front in that little piece at the top. Do they, is it really hard to find men's jeans without the stretch? Gone are the days where you're just like, I go to the cubby with my size and I pick up a pair and I walk out and they're fine. You know, <laughs> gone are those days. Now you have to try on pants. Things don't stay the same. I'm going to use the fabric because sometimes the, oh no, I have the Swedish tracing paper. This is clingier. Kind of nice. Get that right on the fold there. This, what do you think this dot is right here? You think that's like maybe belt carriers placement? I may have gotten rid of my, I don't know how, maybe I got rid of this little catch in my blade. That's never happened before. But this kind of fabric, man, hates a catch in your blade. Whew. You know? Wow, Glenn. Are you blaming on the, the Americans for that? <laughs> Are you like, there are a lot of jeans going to the UK. <laughs> I mean, I know we are a rounder population. We like our stretch. <laughs> I don't blame you. All right, so I need a, I need a left and a right. Uh, okay, I can see the grain line here. Left. Right. Making sure that I have the, um, the fusible side up because uh, this is a left and a right, so they're asymmetrical, so I'm just making sure I have this wrong side down on the fabric with the, feels like it's the glue up. <laughs> no catwalks are to blame, yeah. I don't um, watch the fashion stuff at all. At all. And um, not even in college did I. It just wasn't really my thing. Um, I think it's cool, you know, like I, I, I like, I like it for the entertainment fabric, fab, factor, but you know, I follow Diet Prada on Instagram. I don't know how I came about finding it. A lot of it's, I don't really know what I'm, I'm watching, but I find it really interesting because they're, they also call out people who are copying, like big designers copying smaller ones and I find that kind of thing that conversation really interesting because it's a big big conversation in the fast fashion world like what is copying um, there is no such thing as copyright infringement in the fashion world because it's not text um, I mean there is if you're copying a home so pattern right or you know printed stuff but um, I, I and I I have my feelings on it. I obviously I'm not for anyone copying things, but I've worked in that. I worked for so long with people that were paranoid about it that I definitely developed my own my own take on it. You know, I don't think it's very unique. But so I find the conversation in the comments on that Instagram thing really interesting. Where I'm going with this is they show a lot of runway footage and I really enjoy it like I it's very fascinating it also is a little bit gross to me that it's so far removed from reality and everyday life and I just feel like it makes me feel less sometimes and I'm like no I wouldn't I appreciate that I appreciate the um ingenuity and the um the you know the mood all that but at the same time it's just otherworldly to me you know what I mean? It's just not based in reality. And I know there's that classic um, scene in The Devil Wears Prada, speaking of Prada, where, you know, because, you know, the 
the um, what's her name? Um, the one the intern or the new employee character. She's famous. What's her name? <laughs> um, she's like, oh, I don't care about trends, and you know, of course, the Meryl Streep character's like, yeah, well, um, that's not true. Everything you're wearing right now is as a result of what we pick out in here. And that's a fun way to look at it, but I don't think it's necessarily true. Not nowadays. Um, it's, fashion is, there's too much fast fa fashion now, right now. I, I don't look at Vogue, you know. What is offered in a store, yeah, I mean, you are kind of subject to what's being sold in a store, but stores are also going to make what they think will sell. It doesn't, it's not based on trends always. It's based on what they can sell and make money on, so. Um, let's see here. A little obsessive about my grain lines, aren't I? <laughs> but I do, I love having conversations about copying. Um, and I've been in some really interesting discussions about it with lots of different kinds. Anne Hathaway, thank you so, Megan. <laughs> um, I've been in lots of really interesting conversations with people as high up as, um, People who worked at Guest Jeans during the height of Guest Jeans, which was a really big, iconic brand, to people one-on-one -on -one who've never been in the garment industry and now they want me to create patterns for them because they have an idea and they want to create a line and they're copying someone else's garment and they're handing me their garment. They're like, I want to start a company blah, 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 whatever, and here, I want to start with this, we copy this pattern, and I'm like, see, it's not my place to counsel them, it's not my place to say, that's not right, um, and it sorts itself out, <laughs> it sorts itself out because that, that's not going to fly, no one's going to buy those from someone they don't know, they, you know, they're going to not, they're not going to spend a lot of money on something unless they recognize the brand, right? So it kind of sorts itself out, but at the same time, I'm like, now I'm taking money from someone who maybe I shouldn't be. So it's like a weird thing. It's a big conversation. Or mostly I talked about it because people, my customers were worried I was gonna copy them. That was the most common thing. And it was a really interesting discussion because I could see why they were worried about that, but um, if they were very, very worried about it, I probably didn't want them as a customer because they were just gonna be kind of difficult to work with because they're paranoid and they don't trust me. And I had a really good reputation. I never copy people's patterns. I don't even do it personally um, without anyone knowing. I just, I don't need to. <laughs> and that's eventually where I would go with it. If they really pushed but I could feel like this would be a good person to work with, I would say, you know, I'm just gonna say this really honestly. The thing is, I have the capability to make whatever pattern I want. And that's not a pattern, you know, I wouldn't do that because why would I copy yours when I could just make my own? You know, and then they'd be like, oh, that's true. I'm coming to you because you're the one who knows how to do this. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, if I was in the business of making and selling garments I wouldn't be doing this freelance you know and that logic would help hopefully smooth over any of their doubts or fears in me but it was a little bit ty tiresome and annoying <laughs> so just because it was it was very untrusting you know and I would sign NDAs but my but I would draw the line on a certain point because sometimes they would say oh you can't you aren't allowed to work with any of our competitors and I'm like nope I'm already working with two of your competitors and I'm not telling you that and you don't need to know it and they don't need to know it and I don't use any of your stuff for each other, you know? And sometimes that would happen. They would find out like, oh, you you are. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know? So there weren't a lot of people like me to do that stuff, so it happened. Not often, but it happened. It was really awkward once because someone, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but one time I got this pattern and in the mail from a new customer, from a new client, and they said, I really want to make baby slings. Uh, well, Glenn, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I know there is a lot less variation in menswear 
I don't know if it's copied per se, but it's hard to come up with something new and inventive without doing something fabric based, right? With men's. But yeah, there was a company that wanted to make a baby sling. And I was like, okay, cool. I actually have used those before. I feel like this is something I could actually get behind, like figure, get my head around. You know, it's a really unique product. And um, I was working with them. And then I had another customer that I'd been working with for a while doing things. And she's like, hey, I want to do baby slings. I was like, all right, that's cool. She's like, I'm going to send you a, a pattern. I'm going to send you a sample. She said, I'm going to send you a sample. In my head, I'm thinking she's made one. And now she's ready to turn it into a pattern because that's what a lot of people do. They'll they'll fuss with home sewing a version of it until it gets to where they want and they'll send it to me and I reverse engineer it and I make it, I kind of smooth out the edges. Um, and then what she ended up sending me, this was like my tried and true client I'd used, worked with for years, a lot of integrity. She sent me a sample of my client's sling that I had made. <laughs> And I couldn't tell, it was really, it was the first time I was standing in the post office because I was kind of eager not to see it because I really liked working with her. And when I opened it, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Um, it was the funniest thing ever. When worlds collide. And I had to say, you know, I actually have a conflict of interest on this project. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I knew this wasn't straight. Remember I said that? It looked a little wonky right there. Oh, that is not straight. <laughs> Ooh, maybe I can. Uh... So anyway. Yeah, I know, Terry. It was weird. This is the site. Okay, so. I feel, okay, so I made this to wear. By the way, we're done cutting the jeans. <laughs> I'm going to put my buttonholes on. I made this to wear oh, uh, with this fabric on the outside, but when I was wearing it with you guys yesterday, the flannel was so nice against my skin. So I think, I think, um, so one of these is gonna be buttoned incorrectly, you know? So if I do this one right over left, the other one's not gonna be that way. You know, so. Yeah, I had that happen with um, <clears throat> technical clothing once too. And um, I actually had it happen with someone that I couldn't say anything about. Um, and that was really, really weird and tricky. I only worked on, I think, three companies that got patents on their stuff because that's extremely rare to get a patent. You always button left over right, Melin? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do. I feel like this looks so much better in person. You just have to trust me. All right, this is going to be my buttonhole side. I still need to take out my caps a little bit and smooth them. So, I have one here. Oh, I have my, um, I always forget to use this. Wow. Yay. I'm so happy I remembered to use it. So I usually try and shoot for about three inches apart. And I have two for the cuffs. I'm trying to decide like this one I have at the collar stand and then I have it. Oh, I lost the button on the collar stand. You have one too? I, right, Beverly? I know. It's cool, Terry. All right, so I feel like this could be a little bit further down, like right here. So what is that? That's like two inches. So that's about what I have right there. Okay, so we'll start with this one. And we'll say that this one 
is the one we're going to base it off of. Okay. And then if I kind of go with uh, this, so I have one, two, three, four more, so five. I don't think I'm going to go that low. I think I'm going to do there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. What? Okay. So maybe I want them a little closer together. Like that. Right? It's so nice, Terry. It's like so nice to be able to like... Like I just did, I'm like, okay, maybe I do want to add one more button, you know? I feel like I'm supposed to use this thing for something, but I don't. <laughs> the package instructions were, were none. That looks pretty good, huh? Hi, Rachel, how's it going? I just cut out the jeans. I <laughs> know I'm like, um, just placing my buttonholes just because I'm going to do that anyway. I'm going to sew these right away. So, you know, one thing is my buttonholes is going to look the same on both sides. You know? All right. So, so now uh, what I want to do is I'm going to move this to the top of the button. I always go from the top of the button. You know, that way, uh, that's, I know where the top of the button hole is. And I just need to keep the length of the button hole the same. And I need to keep it the same distance from the front. I'm definitely going to have to hand sew the buttons on. Oh my gosh, I just found all the same color pin. That's miraculous. All right, let's do my... Oh, I'm sorry, someone uh, asking who am I talking to um, <laughs> on... Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't miss that. <laughs> Hi, Pig Pie. Welcome for joining. Welcome to the stream. I stream both on uh, YouTube and on Twitch. And so if you ever want to see like what other people are saying, most of the folks are over on YouTube. But I personally love Twitch a lot, and that's why I stream on both. Did I just unbutton my shirt here? Excuse me. So, um, so yeah. And then all the streams are automatically uploaded to YouTube, so you can always go back. And you can actually see the chat. Just look for this the little tiny word that says show chat or hide chat, and then you can see it. So I'm getting better about finding that on streams I watch that are past streams. All right, so let's see. So um, I'm going to decide. <laughs> my, my line here is a little, this one, the side's not as wiggly. <laughs> but it kind of was on the other side, wasn't it? Yeah, so I just usually like to put this edge on my throat plate and just line it up. That makes it so much easier. Then all I have to worry about is the length of the buttonhole. And I usually use chalk for that, but whoever said recently that they're feeling it stains, I'm starting to see a little bit of that too. So I've been trying to use pins instead. All right, I'm gonna try and do my button. So I try and line up this button with where these buttonholes are gonna be, you know? So if that's about right here. So what I have learned with placing buttons and buttonholes is that you don't want the buttonhole on the shirt. The buttonhole on the um, shirt, when you're wearing it, isn't gonna sit perfectly centered behind your button, right? really what's going to happen, especially on the, the collar stand right here, is it's going to sit um, at the end of the buttonhole, especially if you're if on your neck, you've buttoned it and it's pulling. You always want to do that horizontal button. 
hole right here so that you can give your neck a little bit of space just in case it needs to kind of, you know, go like this, you know, a little breathing room around your neck. Here, I always put the buttonhole at the top of where it's sewn in. I don't have anything to point with right here. So the buttonhole, the top of the buttonhole is going to sit right above where it's sewn in. It doesn't sit up here. It sits right here because your shirt, the gravity of your shirt is going to pull down. And so then your, your button is going to, the buttonhole is going to sit on the top of where your button is sewn in. Does that make sense? So yeah. Oh, thanks for putting the link there. <laughs> That's nice of you. I think it's in the, is it in the about me? That's very nice of you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Alrighty. So um, this took, I don't know why, this took me forever to kind of logically figure that out. Like to just, so like when you're, when you're looking at your buttonhole, I'm gonna draw a picture. When we're putting them on the garment, I feel like in our mind, we're thinking this is how my buttonhole is going to look on the garment. I mean, I'm exaggerating it, right? It would, it would really be like this, right? But where it really is, is like, like that, right? So this is really how your buttonhole sits. The top of the buttonhole sits on top of where you've sewn the button into the shirt because gravity pulls the shirt down and then it rests on there. So this is really how your buttonholes look on the shirt. And so if you're just honest about that from the beginning, yeah, right, Louise? I know. And you know, um, no one ever explained that to me either. It was just one day, I think it was a particular project like that, remember that little girl's dress we did and it had the little bodice and the waist seam and the skirt? That would be a perfect example of where I would have discovered that because I would spend all that time putting the buttons and buttonholes on and I'm like, why is the waist seam off? I made sure that that whole thing matched. And then I realized, oh, well, if I slide the garment, whoop, you know, up to where it matches, then the buttonhole is centered perfectly behind the button, but that's not where it sits. So, so I think when you set yourself up that way, you, your expectations a little better and you're, you kind of give yourself a little more chance of success, getting it all lined up and you've taken one of those factors away. So, so when I do the collar stand, what I do is I think of it, it's sitting like this on the collar stand, right? So if here's the collar stand, oh, sorry, that's really bad, but, and now let's just do, so here's my collar, my collar stand, my placket, right? Here are my buttonholes. I want this first buttonhole, or this collar stand buttonhole to line up, the end of it to line up with where this is right here, right? And that's because I don't want to center this over this because it's the same thing that when the collar's being worn, it um, pulls on your neck. You know, your neck kind of, you need to, you need to breathe. <laughs> You'll really see this on um, tailored things as well. I mean, like, obviously, like all shirts are like this. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm just giving you some logic because for me, things stick in my head if I apply logic to it and it makes sense of why I am my friend just told me recently we were talking about something and I can't remember what it was because I was like I wonder why blah 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 and she's like the difference is that you're curious or that person's curious and I was like that's so that's probably at first I was kind of like I guess and then I was like you know what that's true. I ask a lot of questions and I sometimes get teased for it. I mean, I'll, I'll join a lot of gaming streams. They don't know I'm 48 year old woman who's new to gaming. I've only been gaming for like two or three years. That's still pretty new, you guys. We've, 
when you're hanging out with people that have done it all their lives and things are really natural to them, I will ask questions like how to use the Twitch chat or whatever. And I've been doing that for two years. Like I've been there for two years and there's still things I'm like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. And I just ask. I'm not going to hide the fact that I don't know. I just ask and hopefully someone answers, you know. And I feel like that that is the difference, right? It's because if it doesn't make sense to me, I, it doesn't stick <laughs> until I can apply logic to it. So this is me helping any of you out that that might help, you know. So this first pin's going to go there. And then I find the length of the button like this. And these square buttons, you got to do a sample <laughs> because sometimes they don't fit right or you make your buttonhole too big. <laughs> so here's me telling you that too. I'm a little worried that these buttons are too big for the, this. So I feel like these might need different size buttonholes. So I'm just going to do one and see what happens. You know? Yeah, you're welcome, Terry. Yeah, I mean, it's just things like that, right? All right, so now that's all I'm going to start with because when I get to the machine, I only have one pin for buttonhole, and it's not centered this way. I'll just line up the edge right here with my throat plate so that way I don't have to worry about a pin this way, I have three pins for buttonhole. And then um, I will probably mark each one as I do it or I'll um, hold one up to it so that's that's kind of how I do it I've shown you guys this once before recently it I have to do it however it makes sense to me so but I'm also gonna do a practice one or three to see if the width is gonna work yeah maybe Glenn I mean that's really what turned me on to liking sewing was when I first saw like the inside of a home sewing pattern and saw the instructions and how it went together, I kind of still remember like how, how interesting I thought it was that these instructions can tell me how to do something with no one else telling me and it works. Didn't always work, right? It was a beginner. But the fact that like, and then I would sit there and go, but if they would have said this, that would have made more sense. And of course, you know, it's like you're know-it-all teenager. You think you know better anyway. <laughs> so, you know, you're applying that kind of principle to it. You're like, I know how to do this better, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, I, would, I really found it really interesting what made sense to some people and what it, made, it didn't make sense to the other people. And that kind of thing is really interesting to me. People always say I'm not a good teacher and I think it's because I feel like I don't understand all of that yet, but I am really interested. So maybe that's why it seems like I'm a good teacher. <laughs> I don't know though. I really don't know how to teach yet. So I'm trying to figure that out. I don't know. Logic, <laughs> that's my weapon. <laughs> a very Hermione-ish trait, you know? All right, so I am, so yeah, so this is my reversible archer that we finished yesterday. Super excited about it. So I'm gonna put the buttons and buttonholes on um, and then you'll see it on Instagram. I'm gonna smooth out my flat felt seam here because I really, I started chatting with you guys and not, I didn't pin that and I should have pinned that. Same with that one, but yay. Oh, I, I, should, I should do my cuffs. So let's see here. Let's do the cuffs real quick too. Yeah, Glenn, right? Yeah. I think like verbally if someone accept, kind of explains logic to me, but then they draw me a picture, that really helps. And it's funny, um, when I worked on the farm, one time, the, the, I shared um, like, a, like a downstairs two bedroom apartment type of thing with another worker, a guy, and his dad came and visited him and his dad was such a delight. And um, that, my roommate, he and I did most of the chores together. Like we were both the same like rank, so to speak, on the farm. So we did a lot of the same things and we hung out a lot together. And so I was with his dad a lot. And his dad kept saying, can you draw me a picture? And literally he crouched down in the dirt on the side of the road and say, are you talking about something like this? And I remember at first going, like, I wasn't, 
I wasn't, didn't think it was weird, but I was like, oh, yeah, let's talk in terms of pictures, you know? And his, and my friend Eric, he was just like, oh my God, dad, don't do that to her. And I was like, no, 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 this is great. And so um, I, that has stuck with me forever. He's the only person that has ever said that to me. And I feel like all of us could ask that more often. Like, can you draw me a picture? Like when I'm gaming, I'll say, I just can't visualize what you're talking about. Like, how are you doing it? There was this little move they would do in the game. And they're, I'm like, how are you doing all that with your hands? And my friend sh did a little video of him doing it and then sent it to me. And, um, and that's, we were friends enough that we had our phone numbers and we texted, you know? And so I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, that whole thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, it's so funny. Like, <laughs> most people are visual learners. People say, I'm a visual learner. I haven't met anyone who says, I'm not a visual learner, you know? All right, so for your cuffs, if you're doing this, this is very, in my opinion, very personal. Um, I really tailored these cuffs down too. I took a lot of the volume out of these sleeves and then um, same with the cuff. I don't like, uh, I think it looks better when there's a little, they're a little looser than how I wear them. But for me, I'm a klutz and I wash dishes all the time. I just like all the dishes done and I don't like my sleeves wet. So I have tailored this down. So I'm barely um, overlap my cuff. I don't really have much there, you know? And you know, these also are reversible. I put the pleats correct on both sides. That kind of worked out. I kind of surprised it worked out, honestly. I thought it would be too bulky. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I overlap this about the same on both, and it's gonna be about, I'm gonna do seven eighths of an inch. So this is the same thing, like your cuff, it's absolutely gonna pull apart. Your cuff's gonna pull apart, right? So the end of the buttonhole is gonna sit on the button. So you, you gotta make sure that you position that correctly. Your buttonhole may end up being off of like not on top of this other cuff anymore. Depends on how much overlap you've allowed yourself. Mine usually aren't. I mean, I would like more overlap just for warmth because this is a kind of a cold drafty spot, but um, you know, it's still closed a little bit, so. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Terry. I'm a chronic dishwasher, it's not funny. I'm not a neat freak. I'm not a germaphobe. I'm, um, I like my house picked up and but my dish is done. That's about it. <laughs> so if you come to my house, there's fur. <laughs> I'm always trying to get rid of it. I feel like it's a constant battle, you know? I don't really even need this button because uh, I just, I don't know why I need the button. I just want it visually here. So this is another thing I'm getting better. Like these are pretty good. This is an archer that I'm wearing. And do you see, I put the button, oh, it's so dark, closer to the end of the cuff. I didn't center it. <laughs> I'm learning. This is, I like the way these sit. So I have my buttonhole about five eighths of an inch parallel to the edge right here. So I'm gonna mimic that because this is working for me. So see right here, I'm not centering it. And I think I always used to center it and I don't like it because what happens is when you have the button right here, you have all this happening, right? You have this and I don't like that. I don't like it doing this either. So you can choose to put two buttons, but that's a pain in the butt for me because I will roll up my sleeves occasionally or um, getting it on and off. I, my cuffs are small enough that I sometimes need to. So I'm a, not a fussy person and I do get a little, I'm not claustrophobic, but I do get a little bit like, eh, you know, when I want to get my, my uh, shirt off. <laughs> so I'm going to bias it towards that end like that. And then I pretty sure I put it about a quarter inch from the edge. Let's look at this one. Yeah, so the end of my buttonhole, it's really close to the edge there, isn't it? 
But I really like the way this one fits. Yes, I do think my sleeves could be a little longer, but not really. These fit me really good. Just notice I have some threads there. I think that's from the French seam. Whoops. Yeah, so. Alrighty, so let's see. Quarter inch. I'll do it a fat quarter of an inch. Oops, <laughs> wrong, wrong edge. So about right there is where I'm going to start. So it's going to go this way and about that far away. And the button hole always goes the length of your cuff so that your, your cuff can do this a little bit. Your um, wrists don't breathe, but when you're doing stuff like this, it does kind of open up your cuffs. No, I did, Megan. I'm just doing the buttons and buttonholes. Stop giving me a hard time. <laughs> I just picked up the buttons this morning. So I was just placing them. I already cut the jeans out. So yeah, we're just hanging. All right, where's my other cuff? All right. So pretty much I can do it by measurement, right? So fat quarter of an inch away from the edge. Seems really close, I know and then five eighths an inch away from the end of the cuff. And there we go. And then when I sew one of these, I'm gonna look at it on the other side like this and kind of make sure, you know, that it's the same. I do my best. They're still not perfect. Aw, oh, Megan, no worries. You needed a nap. <laughs> Aww. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to put these on right after the stream. And um, hopefully you'll see it on Instagram today. It'll be nice to show you how it looks. It lo I feel like the Instagram pictures look better than how it looks on camera here. So I know you guys say the cameras are good here, but they're just not the same, you know? Well, um... So if you want to sew these jeans with me, we're going to start that on Saturday. Same time, same place, 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm in California. My name's Sarami, by the way, <laughs> just in case some of you are new here. And um, if you ever want to see all of the videos for a certain project, I have a website that kind of lists them in nice little, like, encapsulated little description. So night, Louise. See you well. So sleep well. See you later. <laughs> Aw, Megan, I'm sorry you're still not feeling good. Thanks, Malin. I know, I wish uh, more people would uh, do the home so catwalk. I've been seeing more and more people doing it, but they're not, I'm not getting like, they're not using my hashtag. So, cool, Terry, thanks. All right. Um, so I'll see you here on... Um, Saturday and yeah, if you want to see so soon, I actually don't have all the videos up on, but I'll do that this afternoon. And then you'll start seeing the saffron jeans on my website, so so dot live, and I'll put the cutting the link to this video and then the link to all the sewing videos. There'll be a part one and a part two. Saturday we're going to sew the fronts completely. So I'm gonna do the pockets, the zipper fly, and the center front seam. That's not very much, I know. I could probably sew them in one go, but I'm gonna I'm gonna like do it in two parts. And then um, we'll do part two next Wednesday. We're kind of off kilter. Usually we cut something Wednesday, sew part one Thursday, and part two on Saturday, and start again the next week. But we're a little off kilter because I did four streams for the jacket, the overshirt. So after that, um, next week, I think on Thursday, <laughs> I'm gonna design a dog sweater. Once and for all, I'm gonna make my dog a dog sweater and sew it. Um, and I'm gonna use his little coat someone gave me, him as a pattern and just make some, cause I need a few so that they're washable. He looks like a freaking couch walking around. Where do you see his coat, you guys? It's ridiculous. Um, I post, post pictures of it on my personal Instagram a lot, but um, I know a lot of you don't see that, but he looks, he looks so silly because it's the only coat we have. <laughs> so I'm going to make them little washable ones. 
He's getting a muddy undercarriage lately, so it'll be easy. And it'll be fun. It'll be fun to sew those and then do a Loki, you know, photo shoot. So <laughs> it'll be a fun thing. All right. I So I'll see you guys Saturday. Have a great rest of your day. Happy sewing. Um, have a great Friday. That's kind of my day to get a ton of stuff done. So I hope I see you on Saturday. And um, thanks for coming. Bye.